You decided to clean up your diet and eat less oxalate. You might have even gone carnival or animal based and you're finally feeling healthy. In fact, you feel on top of the world. But then all of a sudden, something goes wrong. You start to feel not so good. You notice strange symptoms which come and go. You're left confused because this seemingly happens for no apparent reason and you want to know what to do about it. If this is you, you might be oxalate dumping. This is Elliot from EO Nutrition and in today's video, you're going to learn how to manage oxalate dumping, what nutrients you need to take, and towards the end of the video, how to take them. But first of all, you need to know why these nutrients are necessary. Those of you who've watched my other videos in this series have a good idea of what this is, and you want to know how to deal with these pesky symptoms. When someone stopped eating high oxalate plants, say on a carnivore diet, the blood level goes down and this triggers the body to begin releasing what's stored from its own tissue. And then it can be excreted through practically every orifice of the body. On its way out, it can trigger inflammation and cause any or all of the following symptoms shown on the screen. Going cold turkey from oxalates can cause extreme dumping symptoms, which leads some people to feel disheartened and overwhelmed. This happens psychically, so it might only affect you every couple of days, weeks, or even months and seemingly happens for no identifiable reason. So the aim is to manage the rate of oxalate dumping, replenish what's lost, and ease the transition out of the body. Although it might sound counterintuitive, sometimes the only way to help you feel better is to eat a small amount of food which contains some oxalate. It doesn't have to be much, but just enough to slow down the rate of dumping. Something like one or two squares of dark chocolate, a handful of nuts, or even a few cups of tea and have them on hand. If you find that the dumping symptoms are too severe, then you can eat some of these foods to slow the process down. However, this usually is not going to be enough. You need to replenish what's lost and help the body get rid of this stuff. The number one priority is minerals. When oxalate is released, it becomes soluble in the blood and most often binds with potassium. When it's urinated out, they remain bound together. What this means is that it has a depleting effect on this mineral. This is one reason why oxalate dumping can cause symptoms of potassium deficiency, such as thirst, rapid heart rate, muscle weakness, or dizziness. In the worst cases, there are some people who become hypokalemic and actually require medical attention. For this reason, it's essential to replace potassium as you go along. Another mineral to focus on is magnesium. This helps prevent oxalate crystallization and improves the clearance of oxalate through the urine. One thing to know is that some oxalate will be excreted from the body via the intestine, and to prevent it from being reabsorbed, this is where magnesium could come in handy. Magnesium binds with it and carries it safely into the toilet. However, the best mineral at achieving this effect is calcium. Calcium binds very tightly with oxalate and for this reason is protective against oxalate absorption. One thing you can do then is make a drink with a mixture of these electrolytes and you can drink that throughout the day. And although any form of these minerals will come in handy, you can hit two birds with one stone by using the citrate forms. The reason for this? Well, citrate is naturally used by the body to prevent calcium oxalate buildup and can essentially dissolve oxalate crystals. It's even part of the standard medical protocol for kidney stones and oxalosis. This means that using mineral citrates not only replenish the lost minerals, but also help the body clear out excess oxalate. In addition, lemon juice is a rich source of citrate and can be added to water throughout the day. Vinegar, such as apple cider vinegar, is also another way to increase citrate in the urine. Next is the arch nemesis of oxalate, a mineral called sulfate. So sulfate is super important for counteracting some of the damage caused by oxalates in the first place. But as it turns out, oxalate and sulfate share a transporter which is bidirectional. This means that in whichever direction oxalate is going, sulfate is going to go in the opposite direction. So if there's high oxalate traveling into the cell, it can kick sulfate out of the cell. And for this reason, it might have a depleting or wasting effect on this mineral. On the flip side, it also means that giving extra sulfate to the body might actually help the body get rid of excess oxalate. The same also applies to bicarbonate. With this in mind, both can be used in baths to support the body through the dumping process. Epsom salts gives the body sulfate, and you can use either sodium or potassium bicarbonate as well. Another useful source of sulfate is a supplement called MSM, which is also a powerful anti-inflammatory and can be effectively used as pain relief. When it comes to B vitamins, there are three which tend to be the most effective. The first is biotin, and that's because oxalate accumulation in cells appears to block biotin enzymes, this means that it causes an intracellular biotin deficiency. 
Vitamin B6 is another B vitamin which appears to be very useful in people, given that it's depleted during inflammation, which we know can be caused by oxalate. Finally, we have vitamin B1, otherwise known as thiamine. Those of you who follow my channel and have watched the thiamine series will already appreciate how common a deficiency of this nutrient actually is. Now, these two vitamins are absolutely essential in the case where someone's body is making too much oxalate itself, which is quite common, by the way, but that's a topic for another discussion. An amino acid which can also come in handy is called taurine. Taurine has been shown to help the body get rid of excess oxalate, and this might be because it improves bile acid metabolism in the liver. It can also help protect the kidneys from damage caused by oxalate. Finally, another super useful nutrient is called butyrate. This fatty acid is generated by the gut microbiome, and aside from having an overall anti-inflammatory effect, it can increase the rate that oxalate is dumped into the gut and prevent it from being reabsorbed into the blood. So taken together, these nutrients are top priority in my opinion. But now you know what nutrients you can use, you might be wondering how you actually use them. All of a sudden, you experience joint pain, some brain fog, and itchy skin. Your diet's not changed and you think it might be oxalate dumping, but what do you do? If the symptoms become unmanageable and are really severe, do not hesitate to take some oxalate containing food. It might only be a square of dark chocolate or a handful of nuts. The next thing you do is you make a large jug of water, fill it with this electrolyte mix and you sip it throughout the day. Of course, these are just example doses which probably vary from person to person and you may need more or less of each mineral. These supplements should ideally be taken every day, but at least you want to have them on hand for the days that you're dumping. Most people notice that they help a lot with their symptoms. So some caveats here, if you have diarrhea, don't opt for magnesium citrate, take a different form because citrate is a laxative. If you have urinary irritation from potassium citrate, then use potassium bicarbonate instead. On the other hand, if you have constipation, you're probably not going to want to take a calcium supplement because that can worsen the situation. So replace it with magnesium. Another thing to watch for is if you choose to eat some oxalate containing food to slow down the dumping, don't take the minerals at the same time because magnesium calcium might impair the absorption of oxalate. So the dose of B vitamins varies widely from person to person. You start at the lower end and you gradually build up to the higher doses if necessary. The same goes for baths. Start a very small amount and build up very gradually if tolerated. Aim to remain in the bath for at least 20 minutes if possible. And if you don't have access to a bath, use foot soaks. A useful dose of taurine can range anywhere from 500 milligrams per day up to 10 grams per day. On the other hand, butyrate that can be used as either sodium butyrate or calcium magnesium butyrate and the dose it ranges between 600 milligrams and 3 grams per day. Next up, something else that you can focus on is supporting the different organs when you're excreting oxalate by reducing inflammation. For example, if the main problem is the kidneys and the bladder, you want to be drinking plenty of fluids and using something like N-acetylglucosamine which helps repair mucosal barriers. If you have joint pain, on the other hand, a proteolytic enzyme such as serapeptase, MSM, or topical application of DMSO cream can also help. For the skin, aloe vera applied to the area along with CBD can also be helpful. Irritation to the eyes can be supported with saline solution or MSM eye drops. So overall, you want to aim to take these nutrients every single day if possible. Uh, you might need high doses on the days that you're dumping and you can take a lower dose of everything on the days that you're not dumping. Although different people need different things, this is a basic tool set which seems to apply for most individuals. In the next video in this series, I'm going to look at some of the root causes for oxalate problems and figure out whether someone is at risk or not. Make sure to check it out and I'll see you next time.